one by one they continue to drop off like dominoes manchester united and injuries are becoming inseparable casemiro is the latest to join the long list of injured senior players at manchester united as we do continue to follow the international break question is when we do return on the 21st to face uh, sheffield united will our players be fully fit for the action let's wait and see but for now in this international break two of our players have had a good 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 show in the last game that was played that is the Danish duo of Christian Eriksen and Rasmus Hoyland they don't they did not both score but they both assisted as their Denmark beat Kazakhstan by three goals to one easily these guys continue to show that they are certainly a whole different ball game when they get to international colors but what does happen when they come back to United, what goes on that side? But uh, guys, uh, so Christian Eriksen uh, participating in what has been an exciting outing for Denmark as they beat uh, Kazakhstan at home continues to show you how our players really, really, really perform well uh, for their international teams because for their national teams because even in the last international break we do remember Eriksen, uh, uh, Bruno. Fernandez, who, who will be in action tomorrow uh, as his Portugal takes on Gibraltar. Uh, then you talk of uh, Scott McTominay, talk of Johnny Evans. All these players were on form in the last international break. They returned to United and you couldn't exactly say the same. They couldn't replicate the good performances they put on for their national teams. Why? We, get, we are yet to find out. But this break as well continues to be good and decent for United players. Now, Ericsson for me is one of interest because remember, Casemiro did you uh, get substituted off after a knock in the 79th minute of their one-all draw against Venezuela. We are not sure of uh, how bad the injury is, but it is possible that he might not be fully fit for Sheffield on that Saturday when the Premier League returns. Now, what that means is that we are either, uh, either going to bank on uh, on. Uh, Kobe Maino, if he's fully fit, because we know he's back training, but we are yet to get confirmation of whether he's 100% percent fit to start games. If not, it is Christian Eriksen who expect to perhaps play alongside Amrabat in that midfield role. Now, what does that mean? If, um, if Christian Eriksen is performing well for the national team, then it's a good thing. But clearly, uh, the Eriksen who plays for Denmark is a shadow of himself at, at Manchester United. I think... <clears throat> The Premier League is way too intense for Christian Eriksen. I think it has left him, uh, in all fairness. I think he can no longer cope with the physical demands of the Premier League. And that's why he has been quite exposed several times in the games he has played. Even when he's a brilliant player and you hope that he will have that moment of brilliance and because of his experience, he can manage uh, to, to cover up the lack of gas and pace with his technique and you know uh, ball handling. It is still not enough because of the nature of the Premier League and the demands it has in terms of physicality. So um, my thinking is, I mean, whereas we ended, uh, we, we went into the break on a high after, you know, uh, winning that 600th game at Old Trafford in foggy time, thanks to Scott McTominay, uh, it's a little worrying how we are going to return. Now, for one, because of the injury situation, like I said, the beauty though is there is a possibility that some of our players will be back. Uh, fit because I actually expect a few players to return fit. I, I hope Kobe Maino is one of those because for me he's the most important player we need fit right now on the pitch. Uh, but also uh, the situation with the takeover, the takeover talk as well guys, we don't think we'll have these you know speculations about who is taking over uh, Manchester United, Sheikh Jassim pulling out and it won't have it, uh, you know an effect on the players. Certainly they will have this at the back of their minds. Certainly they are worried about who they are playing for. Certainly they are worried about what the future of the club is because clearly the lack of investment is, affect, is affecting them. And one of those who think one of the reasons why our players get injured day in, day out is because of the lack of proper world-class facilities for them to train in. Because Cristiano Ronaldo revealed this, you know, the gym he left in 2009 when he was joining Real Madrid is the same, the same facilities he left are the same facilities there. Certainly it can't be, at the same, they can't be at the same level, uh, you know, uh, as the, the best practice is right now when it comes to, you know, training facilities for world class footballers. So I feel that uh, there is a lot uh, for, for, for Manchester United players to, to be worried about now and how that will affect them when we return to action is so important. Again, think about the atmosphere at Old Trafford. We are not sure of what we are going to see. Certainly you expect placards, uh, you know, push, calling for the Glazers' heads. Some should be attacking Sajim Ratcliffe because we know he's not the most uh, popular of bidders uh, for United. 
so the frustrations of Jasim pulling out because of the frustrations caused by the Glazers. So you don't expect a, a rosy atmosphere at Old Trafford or, or even away when we turn to the Premier League. So how is that going to affect the players when they had almost picked up the, uh, you know, their rhythm? And theories about you know this club you know having a curse haunting them make sense at a time like this because whereas I am one of those who feel this whole takeover situation should be over and done with at once so that we focus on the football and i'm hoping it does i don't like the timing the, the, the timing at which this news this twist has come because it comes at the time when we are almost having hope that our season was going to turn around because the victory don't take that victory against brentford in foggy time for granted that is the adrenaline that defines manchester united now if that is back in us we want us to just build on it we don't want it to be fettered by talk of Sajim Ratcliffe taking over 25% of the club for a rip of 1.8 billion pounds. I mean, we don't want that to be fettered by talk of Sheikh Jassim saying he's, he's uh, putting his last bid 100% and all and then pulling out of, 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 of the bidding process. You don't want to hear that now when things seem to be heading right. The only left piece in the United Jigsaw was going to be that takeover. Uh, Sheikh Jassim is taking over the club. Everyone would be happy and riding behind him. That is what everyone was hoping to see. But with the situation now, it takes you back to what exactly we are going to expect when the, these players do return. And in all fairness, uh, we, we might want to start now thinking of realistically how, how we will finish this season. United is uh, uh, eight points off the top, which is not for me it's not so, so, so bad. Uh, we have you know, only uh, barely 10 games into the season. It's a marathon. United had a chance. We've, all the teams ahead of us are not exactly the most exciting. Yes, they are better than us, but they are not exactly the most exciting that you feel they're unplayable, they're uncatchable. If we put our house in, in order, we can actually compete for the top three places. But if this takeover situation is coming and taking us back, coupled with the injuries that we keep getting, then it becomes a whole different game. It's like taking one step forward and four steps back. That's where we are. So you can imagine this thought process of Eric Ten Hag now. He has struggled uh, to try and manage and keep the team together, get fans believing in what's happening. But then the takeover talk is keeping on, you know, disorganizing everything they're building. So it shows you how deep, how deep a hole we've sunk in as Manchester United. And there is a lot of work that is needed to be done for us to get out of it. But that said, going back to the football, I'm, I'm thinking uh, this is the opportunity uh, that Ten Hag will have to try and make a few changes. Uh, if uh, the injuries continue, Casemiro is not there, Kobe Maino is not there. I mean, stop playing Amla, uh, Amrabat on the left. Play back three if you have to with the Cheva central defenders, Maguire, uh, Varen, and whoever on the left, Diogo Dalot. Then play Amrabat in the middle together with uh, pack up that midfield, together with uh, you know uh, Christian Eriksen because he plays alongside the deep uh, lying midfielder, even for Denmark, uh, play him there. And then, of course, Bruno up front. I hope Bruno keeps fit because he has played the most football of any player in Europe in the last year. Right now, I think I would be justified to be worried about our players and getting injuries. I hope he finishes the international break fit. His uh, Portugal is playing Gibraltar tomorrow. You expect him to feature in that one. So there is... A lot of work for Ten Hag to do in terms of managing these players, avoiding injuries, but also managing their psychology for them to be psyched up to come and play games and have the mentality to, 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 to endure whichever environment, which might be even hostile when the, the Premier League does return. So they've got to be prepared for that. But uh, that said, that's where we are. For Casemiro, we are yet to know what exactly uh, happened. He suffered a knock. We don't know the intensity of that injury, uh, but also hope for some good news in terms of players returning and most especially Kobe Maino might be returning very soon which should be perhaps uh, a lease of life for Manchester United when it comes to that midfield. Hot spot, do subscribe. My name is Web Guys. I will catch you later.